Sean from Ace Appliance in Toledo, Ohio. Welcome back to another in-home diagnostic video brought to you by Appliancevideo.com. All right, we're on the Whirlpool gas range. We're here to replace the control panel and the back rear panel. It's kind of hard to see from up front, but there's a big dent in the top right here, and the rear back panel also is damaged. So we have to pull it out to, to be able to get to that. Um, what we're going to do so we don't damage the floor, we have a piece of cardboard. We're, I'm actually going to just lift the range up, put the front legs on it, and slide it out slightly so that way I can remove power and then access the, the rear of the machine. The tools you'll need for this repair are a number two Phillips, which I've incorporated in my drill, and a number two square bit, which I also will incorporate in my drill. All right, so now we're on the cardboard. And we can actually just slide it forward. Now we'll peek back here to see our gas line and our power line and make sure we don't pull it up too far and damage anything. So we got a couple more inches we can get it out. There's that. Now we can get to the plug and uh, just lean around to the back and, and do it because the gas line won't go much farther than this. All right, so we're going to go ahead and remove our panel here. We already have the power disconnected. So we're just going to start taking out our screws. That's technically all the screws that are going to hold the panel in, but we may have to remove a couple more so that way we can get actually get the panel out. All right, yeah, I'm going to remove at least one more on each side to allow this uh, other panel a little flexibility. All right, so now we'll see if we have enough room to get this panel. So we have it off, and we'll just set it on the burner grate for right now. Now we can see everything inside this here. Basically all of these components are going to have to be removed to go into our new control panel as well. So uh, we'll go ahead and disassemble and try to remove our actual panel first. In order to do so, there's some screws that are going to go on the uh, underside of the front. So we'll go ahead and restart by removing those. All right, so in order to get these screws that they have here holding it on, I'm probably going to have to remove the cooktop or else I'll scratch it. So now we're going to start disassembly of the cooktop. So I'm just going to pull the grates off, set them on my moving blanket over here. All right, so I'm going to remove our, our uh, burner caps, and I'm just going to set them on the counter in the fashion that they were on the stove, so I'm sure to get the right one in the right spot. Next, each burner is held in place by uh, two screws and luckily since this is a new stove uh, the screws should cooperate and come out on an older stove that things have overflowed and corroded the screws a lot of times they don't come out should all be loose so now with that I can just lift lift them off and once again I'm going to set them in the same pattern Now there may be some locking tabs underneath the front of this, uh, so we're going to go ahead and just try to lift. It doesn't lift up right away. So hidden in the front, there are no locking tabs. What's going to have to happen next is we're going to have to remove this piece here behind our knobs to access two screws that go up from underneath. All right, so in order to remove this, we're just going to remove our knobs. We're just going to slide them off. 
just like the other things, we're going to set them in the order that we remove them so we're sure to get the right knob in the right spot. They should all be the same, but just in case, by doing this, you don't have to think. We'll open the door. There's some screws that are going to go across the bottom of this panel uh, that we're going to go ahead and remove. Grab my drill. So I'm going to go ahead with those. Now, in theory, our panel should come off. Ta-da! Now we have access to the screws here and here, and we're going to remove the two screws for the cooktop. And now, with any luck, we can remove our cooktop. So we'll go ahead and do that. We're gonna just grab it, swing it out, see if it wants to come off. So now we have the cooktop off. All right, so now we should be able to access the two screws at the bottom of our control panel. All right, and now we'll hope that the control panel will just kind of slide up and off, which it does. And we can kind of just let it hang right here to remove the two electronic components from this so we can transfer those into our new, uh, new piece. All right, so there are three screws that are holding our electronics in. I'll start over here with my spark module. Remove the screw for that. And our spark module is now loose. Do the same thing over here for our electronic control. This one has two screws. And now all of our electronics are loose. And then what we need to remove now are the metal mounting brackets inside of the panel here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and remove our brackets. Basically, they're kind of like spring-loaded, push down, and then twist them out. There's one, two, and do the same thing for this guy here. And three, so now we have our old dented panel that we can dispose of. All right, I'm gonna leave as much of the uh, bubble wrap on as I can so I don't damage it. So I'm gonna go ahead and start inserting the uh, brackets into place. Of course, they don't wanna fit, do they? So they've also been bent a little bit from that panel being bent down. So we're just gonna bend it back to make the spring, we'll say more springy, if that's a word. Do the same thing over on this side. All right, so now that's what we'll mount our ERC onto. We're gonna go over here for our spark module. And let's see if we can, that one's gonna need any adjustment or not. Nope, this one's tight. All right, so there we go. We have all, all that now. Now we're gonna go ahead and uh, uh, put in our electronics. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take my moving blanket and lay it up across here So that way I don't scratch the face of this uh, While I'm doing that so okay, so we got this here We got our moving blanket down to protect the face of this panel. We're just going to set our electronics in the area which they go and uh, Just fasten everything down All right, so there's the thing I'm not going to tighten that one down all the way so that way I have a little extra room to wiggle and adjust so the other side can line up. All right. So now we should be, in theory, be able to pop this into position, attach the screws to mount it. So that's what we're going to do now. All right. So our uh, end caps here, these have to go inside the, the panel. So that's what we're going to aim to do first, is we'll say tuck those in. And then our panel should 
slightly, we'll say roll down into position. So that way we can attach those screws. All right, so we are down in position here. So I can go ahead and attach my two screws from underneath that I had uh, taken off earlier. Just for fear of them falling down, I'm going to tighten them up all the way. Same to this side now. All right, so now our panel is in position. I'm going to remove my moving blanket. And now we can put our cooktop back on. All right, so we have our cooktop. There are little hinge points up here, we'll call them, that the top of my cooktop has to go up into. So that's going to be our chore and uh, see if we can execute. That's lined up. We can go ahead and attach the two screws that went under the front of the cooktop. So open up the door. And that's what we'll do now. All right. And also, while we have this open, attach our uh, we'll say control panel. All right, now the control panel, there are slots on the edge here. And there are little tabs here. So that's what we have to uh, make sure to get lined up. So get one side, but not the other. All right, that's good. All right, so those are on now. Go ahead and install our screws from underneath. All right, and then we can go ahead and put our knobs back on. our door now we can reattach all of our burners all right so we have our burners we have to make sure that everything's lined up here all right so we'll set our burners in position make sure our, our igniters are pointing out like they should and start to screw them down We got all of our burners reassembled. Now we're gonna take our burner caps, put them back in position. And then we can get our grates, put those back on, and then we'll get to the back and replace our back panels. Set our grates back in. There, now we can get to the rear and uh, reattach our back panel. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put our panel in, make sure all of our wires are where they should be, and get our upper portion of this panel to tuck in underneath our control panel. Start with my side. Alright, so there's 
one part of it. I'm going to come over to this way. And tuck just this little lip in here. And hope the other side doesn't come out in the process. Just like that. And then we can go ahead and reattach all of our screws. Got the unit back. We're just just tested all the functions. We already tested the oven. Just gonna make sure all the burners work since we had to uh, take it apart. So everything functions fine at this point. Uh, and uh, there we go. Thank you for watching another quality in-home diagnostic video brought to you by Appliancevideo.com.